Hey everyone, Nick Grio, Grio's Garage. I'm here with Sam Battersby, who you know very well, and our very special guest, Jeff Brown. Uh, we brought Jeff here specifically to talk about the G9. This uh, podcast or YouTube live event will be all about the G9, uh, but we are here to answer any more of your questions as well. Um, so first order of business, we have already selected four winners for the G9 giveaway yeah. based upon submissions. We had over 500 questions submitted, so an enormous amount of participation. Yeah, thank you guys. It was awesome to see. Holy cow. Yeah. I mean, we can't answer all of them, but luckily there was a lot of overlap. Um, and then there were some really unique questions that uh, we picked out to give uh, as prize winners. But we will be giving away four, four questions submitted in the live stream. You can submit them now, or uh, we will call for submission once again later in the video. And then likewise, if you're watching this video at home after the live stream has concluded, <coughs> uh, post your questions in the comments, and we will be giving two prizes to uh, people who have left the best questions in the comments um, after the live stream is all over. Your chance is not over. Yeah. <laughs> We're giving away 10. You're going to want one of these. Uh, we've done a lot of work. They're exceptional. So uh, once again, uh, we brought Jeff on here to talk about the G9 because Jeff was incredibly integral in this tool's development. I'm sure most of you know him from uh, his work on the Boss tools, which we've had in our line since 2015. But Jeff, do you want to uh, expand upon what you do for us here at Grills Garage? Uh, I get to actually do my passion uh, for a living, so it's uh, it's just I feel really fortunate to be a part of the team, and uh, I I get to contribute in a lot of different ways, uh, which is good for me because my attention span can be rather <laughs> short sometimes. So I've got a lot no. of variety. Hey, hey, you shut it, you shut it. But a lot of variety uh, to do the things that I love. So, well, and obviously you yeah. have a wealth of experience with regards to uh, chemical development high-end abrasives, a uh, lot of experience in the industry, and then likewise, uh, you've taught us and our company a ton about machine manufacturing, um, and your insistence on quality is second to none. So yeah. um, it's really important to have you as part of our team. Thanks, Nick. Um, okay, so without further ado, <laughs> we'll talk about the machine, right? So this yeah. is the G9 Random Orbital Polisher. My baby. Uh, <laughs> Two years of extremely hard work, um, and basically this is a revamp of our six-inch polishing platform that we've sold uh, in one shape, way, or form since 1992. It's a long time. Yeah. Um, orbital polishers, I mean, they've they've come a long way. Would you guys not agree? I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's if you look back to the the the, the original tool that kind of started it all. I mean, it came from the wood industry, and um, I can remember conversations with people that really doubted the capabilities of those tools. And to see, just for me personally, I've been in the business since I was like 17 and started um, having a hand on orbital polishers back in 95. And just to see the transformation and what the capabilities are um, with regard to orbitals uh, is, is astounding. I mean, you can can almost achieve anything with these things except for putting paint back on. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I mean, again, we, we have, uh, <laughs> th that brings up a really good point. Yeah. Random orbital polishers, they were, you know, initially used in woodworking, yeah. right? You didn't want to yeah. generate too much temperature for a sensitive piece of wood. Sure. Because you would uh, burn that and scar it permanently. Yeah. The fortunate thing we have with paint is we can always add more paint. It costs a lot of money. Yeah. We never want to get into that situation with one of these try, tools. Try not to, no. <laughs> but the concept's the same, right? Yeah. Low temperature. Sure. Um, and so we've, we've done a lot of things to improve this tool. So um, why don't we talk about just why we revamped our six-inch platform, first sure. and foremost. Yeah, so just we had a few questions come in about, you know, is this the new GG6 or when are you guys going to redesign the GG6? This tool has been fully replaced by the G9, just to make that clear. The G9 is the next generation of the GG6 platform. Uh, if, if you've been a longtime customer of Grio's Garage, you, you know that the Sir Henry Royce uh, is, 
his, his famous speech is really our, our mantra. It's what gets us up in the morning. It's what drives our course of action every day. And, you know, you, you take the best that exists and, and you make it better. That's one of the key, key phrases in that quote. And, you know, for me personally, um, I'll just I'll speak from a personal perspective. Being a perfectionist is not always something that's appreciated. Um, you'd agree. Um, you know, certainly you can go a little bit too far with it um, and stall out and almost paralyze yourself by just trying to like pursue perfection. And frankly, it's not attainable. We all, I think, sane people recognize that. Yeah. <laughs> Strive for perfection. Strive in for everything. perfection yeah. in everything. So that is uh, what we do. And uh, we, we took the, the six inch random orbital. That, that tool has been on the market since 2012. It served us exceptionally well. It's the highest uh, volume seller. Uh, yeah. I think we confirmed in the United States and we have a lot of very happy customers that have used that tool and we'll continue to use that tool. Yeah. But we, we wanted more. Sure. So. A lot more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you want to talk, Sam, maybe talk about the differences just immediately. Um, Absolutely. With regards to those tools. I think, I mean, I know the first difference I always see is the lack of one of these on this guy right here. <clears throat> Just to be clear, we got a couple questions about this as well. This is not a cordless battery powered orbital. This is <laughs> an orbital that is powered by a 110 outlet, but it has a quick disconnect cord. Oh, hand me that there, Nick. So this is your cord. It does require this to run the tool. No, it will not run without this cord. But the quick disconnect feature is easily one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, you know, for us type A guys that love things really organized, coiling up a cord around your orbital or even like this and stuffing it in your drawer or hanging on your wall isn't always the, the most appealing thing. Sure. So the disconnect cord gives you the chance to disconnect the cord from the orbital, <clears throat> put your orbital away cleanly. And it also eliminates one of the weakest points on every corded power tool out there, which is the cord to tool junction. So your point here is gonna be one of the most common fail points on any power tool, not just an orbital, because it's constantly getting moved and abused, and if that shorts out, you're out of luck with your tool running. So we've eliminated that issue with the quick disconnect cord. We have this in 10 foot and 25 foot variant, so you can run the longer cord option as well. For those of you that liked our 25 foot cord, six inch orbital. Couple other very noticeable differences right off the bat. Obviously the overall ergonomic design of the two is very different. We had a question just about size. Can you just hold oh, them yeah, up for size absolutely. comparison? Yeah, so you can see the G9 is a, a bit longer in the body, but the overall package from backing plate to tail is gonna be very, very similar. So it's slightly longer, being that you have the pistol grip design here. But again, very similar size. The G9 is half a pound lighter than the GG6 when you have the cord attached as well. Can we also say that the cord, uh, one of our biggest challenges in pitching this concept to Richard oh, uh, was the idea that, well, if you keep <laughs> pushing this cord in and out, that it's going to eventually create this you know, failure point of its own where it won't yeah. seat and so the tolerance is extremely narrow. Yeah. And the thing is, strong as all get out. Uh, I'm not I, gonna rodeo it around my head <laughs> like Nick does in the video for uh, yeah. Jeff and Nick's safety here, but it is a very strong junction there. There's really no concern, as you can see. Yeah, a it, couple things that uh, you wanna geek out on this. You know, typically cords are, uh, the failure point is, is at this point where the the tool, um, the cord exits a tool. Typically, most of us, the best practice is to have the cord over your shoulder and not dragging down the side of the car. And so we put a slight upward, I think a five degree sweep on the uh, cord. And then the gusset is very robust and flexible at the same time. So it protects that cord. Um, and if you, if you haven't noticed, you've got a pin or a release button at the bottom that actually creates a really positive engagement. So if there is any concern, uh, about the cord being, a, you know, coming out while you're working. Trust me, um, I was harassed. Okay, I was <laughs> harassed almost daily by Mr. Grio, not this guy, his his uh, his senior. 
But, uh, and, and so it was very critical. I knew that if this wasn't perfect, I'd probably be looking for a job. So anyways. <laughs> well, it's a big endeavor. Again, yeah. that, that uh, most of the comments we saw related to this entire shift were, why fix something that's not broken? Right? The GG6 has been on the market yeah. for seven years. It's got a great reputation. Uh, professionals pretty much all have an equivalent of that tool, if not that tool. A lot of them probably have that tool yeah. uh, in their arsenal. But it is just that, that perfection, right? Yeah. Striving for perfection, improving it. We're not complacent. Yeah, well, innovating. Like Nick said, it had been in the marketplace for seven years. We wanted to do something new. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, if, if you look at the design of the original tool, it really is, it follows the design of a grinder. And, you know, this is essentially a grinder that's been converted into a, a DA sander on orbital sander. So, you know, it's, it's, it's comfortable. This is definitely a comfortable tool. There was a lot of thought in 2012 put into this, you know, with the, the front wraparound grip and just a, a, a diameter of the rear portion of the tool. But um, we've, we've just, we look at every tool on the market and we'll maybe talk a little bit more about that later, but how can we make it better? So, yeah. Um, just a couple comments coming in. Uh, first of all, the warranty on the G9, unchanged. Lifetime guarantee against defect. That is our standard here at Griot's Garage. Uh, that has not changed. Uh, likewise, in order to win the giveaway, submit a question either about the G9 nice. or something that'll make us laugh or Whatever, we're gonna pick some winners as part of this live stream. And like we said, if you're watching this uh, after it's been published, we are gonna pick two winners uh, from the comment section on the YouTube post. Um, okay, so one of the bigger differences, uh, obviously the, the entire tool is a ground up redesign, right? We started with a concept, yep. a, a drawing that you made about your ideal tool and likewise took a lot of the lessons that you taught us yeah. in, the, in the boss ergonomic development. Um, but let's talk yeah. about uh, power plant, the, the motor itself. Sure, sure. Um, so I think we've alluded or we've mentioned this in perhaps some other content, but you know, when you build a motor, it's, it's really, really easy to, to get on a, on a you know, website and order up some shiny, pretty you know, aluminum heads, uh, ported and polished and uh, crankshafts that are just beautiful and, and all these wonderful components are available to the aftermarket but to 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 put those together in a harmonious way is is not something that's easy um, that's why yeah. you have built engine builders that get paid a fair amount of money to put together you know these magnificent new engines that are, are coming out but uh, with this tool the power plant you know we looked at the uh, a couple different things that are that make this special um, you know, in terms of improvements above and beyond what we've previously had. Um, one would be um, just the makeup of the motor. It's, I've, I've personally seen how it's, how it's manufactured. It's all, uh, you know, done via computer-aided aided, um, you know, equipment, and everything's repeatable and precise and consistent, after, you know, over every single part that's, that's produced. Um, quality control that goes into ensuring that everything is within spec and within a very tight tolerance range is, I'll, I'll say, is impressive nonetheless. So um, a couple things that really make this motor special is that we've, it's kind of a, uh, an additional component, but we've integrated a constant speed control to this that controls the power. Um, you know, we've upped the power by, what is it, um, I made a note, watts. almost 18% over the original tool. So, you know, there's been quite a few people that, or a few people that have had the tool and have used it and they've said, wow, you know, I have always just turned the, the machine up to six because more is better and I want to have more power. So what they've, what they've learned is that you have to, you have to dial it back because this thing's, it's, it's got more power than you'll, you'll probably ever need. Yeah. So, you know, you definitely want to just, you don't need to put it to the floor every time you, you head out of an intersection. Yeah, right? we, we had a lot of questions about output relative to efficiency. And, and the way I like to think about it is, uh, you know, a lot of guys commute in Hellcats, right? Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. they have 707 horsepower, uh, sometimes because of bragging rights, but sometimes they might take it to a place where they can use that power. Sure. Uh, and likewise, for our tool, we think about over-engineering capacity so that we get durability. Yep. And we don't offer a lifetime guarantee lightly. We want this thing to last a lifetime. Um, and as such, we give you something that you're going to strain 
and you're probably going to break it. Yeah. However, if you got that upper end and yeah. you can use 75%, guess what? That's efficiency. Yeah. yeah you can, you're not constantly redlining your tool. Well, yeah. with the G9. Speak for yourself. I mean, I, with cars, I mean, I, I just, it's always to the floor. But, it's nice yeah. to have that power there when you need it, for sure. Some other things that make this special, uh, just some things are uh, just even the copper windings, the material that's been selected um, actually contributes to a lower heat uh, generation from the motor. Um, you'll notice this white glue. Um, there's varnish that's applied, which is common with most electric motors, to the, to the copper to protect it from corroding. Uh, but then this varnish, you'll notice that the white varnish covers, these are called commutators, it connects the, the, the windings to the brush pickup, that's this portion here. So this is a common failure point with electric motors because it's not protected and, and locked down, for lack of a better way of saying it. So they can come loose and the, start the, the to tab break. comes loose yeah. and then you have sparks. You've maybe you know, seen or that with flames. some of your tools, yeah. not ours of course, but. Yeah. Um, and then also the, the fan, um, the fan is designed specific to the, the thousand watts and to the, the needs of the system to ensure that's part of the cooling system that we've integrated. We've really focused on heat generation and, and the, you know, the, the ability to control that, so. Yeah. All right, awesome. So again, 18% increased power over our previous generation. Can we, can we move that thing out of here? Let's yeah, focus absolutely. on G9. Uh, <laughs> the latest and greatest here. Uh, so from 850 watts to 1,000 watts, uh, 8.5 amps, um, yep. the thing has got plenty of grunt. And uh, again, you can use lower speed operation yeah. uh, with that uh, advanced speed controller. You can maintain consistent pad rotation in areas of uh, higher pressure yeah. or uh, curved panels as well and avoid stalling. That just uh, to get a little more geeky, sorry, Nick. You know I do That's that to you all the time, but yeah. I know it drives you crazy. <laughs> um, but this is essentially a magnetic crank sensor, if you will, like a, from a motor. So this, this has magnets in it that uh, pick up sensing sensors from, from the, the rotor, and that uh, basically communicates the RPM to the electronic speed control. So when you apply pressure, or if your backing plate comes into a a body line, or I should say a concave panel where the plate starts to slow down, the, the rotor can, it, that's part of the system, is it'll sense that sl the reduction or that, that load on the motor, and it'll compensate by adding more power. Um, and that's, that's a big uh, advantage over our previous tool, which did not have that feature. Okay, um, so we've got a general question about uh, where the tool is made, and I think that uh, a lot of this, we, we had a couple guys saying, why isn't this tool made in America? We can't make anything in America outside of the chemicals. To do something this sophisticated really requires capacity that we have exported. Luckily, we have found a partner that is very similar to our company, uh, and that is different from our previous partner. So you yeah. want to speak to our new manufacturing partner and just the, the amount of change that we've witnessed in that? Uh, yeah, I, it's... Uh our, our, our new partner uh, is, is, a, is a, a younger couple and that come from a family. Um, it's a family-owned business, much like Rio's Garage. And the, the attitudes, the values, the uh, determination for delivering the very best, like they're, they're just, they're, it's special. I don't want to get emotional, but that's, that's what it is. And um, they're relentless in pursuing um, perfection, which is just in alignment with us. And I, I'll just say that there's a lot of companies that are driven by one thing, and that's the dollar. And I can, I, I can speak from personal experience, that's not what drives us. That comes from doing things right and, and doing things that you know, exceed people's expectations. That'll come later. That's not what motivates us. It's the same thing with them. They, it's not, all, it's not all about the dollar. It's about creating something really special that puts smiles on people's faces. Yeah. So. And it turns the world on its head, right? We, we yeah. put a lot into yeah. this machine. So yeah. you've spent over 20 days visiting the factory, which, again, <sighs> to reiterate, is a world-class factory. Yes. Uh, they don't hand out the certifications that this tool got yeah. without being incredibly accessible yeah. with some of the finest working conditions. Uh, and highest grade technology incorporated into their manufacturing processes, their certifications, uh, the standards upon which they operate. So you've seen all that firsthand. 
Um, I've, I've, like I said, I yeah, like Nick said, I've I've spent I've been over there now three times, and I've seen uh, virtually every aspect of the of the operation. I've you could you could almost eat off the floor uh, in in its in terms of cleanliness and organization. Uh, what really struck me is to see the smiles on the factory workers' faces. Um, they were they were proud of what they were doing, and that that like that hit hits me. You know, they're yeah. just like us, so it's it's really cool. Um, what else can I say there? I don't know. You keep no. I mean, down. again, I just think it's uh, we we have found an innovative partner that yeah. will allow us to not only continue to refine this tool, but uh, likewise we alluded to alluded to it in the launch video we we're going to be looking at every tool we offer uh, and continue to build our portfolio and refine it and perfect it i think it's also important to remember that there's a big difference between buying something from that's made overseas from a company that may not back it up i think we all know as well as hopefully all of you guys watching that we stand behind our products 110 percent yeah man you know if, if you don't like this tool We'll take care of you. Yeah, simple as that. But I guarantee you, how, you will how could like that. Be him? yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. No, this is uh, this is really again a, a ton of collective effort, alignment between two companies that share the same long-term vision. Yeah. Uh, the customer is the first focus. The experience you get from this tool is paramount. This represents an investment. This also represents an endorsement in our company, and likewise their company. And you will not be dissatisfied with this tool. Yeah. Okay, let's move along. We've All talked right. about the, the Quick Connect cord. Again, our heads were going to be on a stake if it didn't work well. It works very well. If you haven't watched our videos, I swung that thing around my head. I literally got shoulder workouts uh, from doing that thing because we had to do so many takes in slow motion. It was what, like six or eight takes? Yeah, I mean, I was swinging that thing around my head. It was like a rep. I made uh, at least like, doing a set. Rotations. Yeah, and I was slinging it. I mean, uh, it's not... Uh, weight less, right? <laughs> it is lower weight than our previous machine, but that cord held on. And I, I remember the, the one litmus test was like, okay, we got to plug it right back in, right? Yeah, yeah did sure we, it still works. Did we loosen anything and boom, right back to work. Uh, hey, so that's an awesome feature. Don't try that at home. I got one more thing though on the cord. It's, okay. it's just one thing. Give me it, give me it. All, all right. right. All right. The, the cord of the previous tool is made out of PVC. So polyvinyl chloride when it gets cold, which for me being in Minnesota is really annoying. The cords turn into uh, somewhat of a rigid experience. So um, the new cords are, uh, the, the rubber compound is actually SJO, which if you want to get geeky again, it's chemical resistant. So if you're dragging it around your shop as a professional, uh, it's going to last a long time. You're not going to see it rotting and cracking like some, some of the lesser cords will, will do. Um, additionally, um, that SJO is rubber, so the rubber compound is very flexible in an even cold environment. So once this thing gets uh, kind of loosened up a little bit, it'll be a much user, more user-friendly, uh, better experience with that. So Can we also give you a little tease? We, we definitely pioneered this concept with regards to the random orbital, and the technology can be incorporated into many other things. Yeah, lots of things. Yeah, so um, <laughs> so we've had a bunch of uh, questions about cooling and temperature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. I want you to speak to one of the, the patented aspects, which is this counterbalance assembly. Yeah. And then, and then likewise, that. I want you guys to talk about just the overall operation sure. uh, of this tool relative to those improvements. So we, we touched earlier on the, the, the cooling that's you know, been um, considered with regard to the motor. Now, uh, there's a lot of things that can contribute to heat in a motor, or in a, in a polisher, I should say. Uh, one would be the the airflow, and you know it's it's got an induction area where it pulls cool air in, and then the fan pulls it through and exhausts it out the front of the tool. In most cases, uh, so with this tool, there's actually three intakes, two on the side, and we've put one on the bottom. It may seem insignificant, but it added I forget the percentage increase, but it it contributes to a more even cooling uh, with regard to the, 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 the rotor or the motor. Um, we've got exhaust, you know, I, I, we've got exhaust coming towards the front on the side. So it's got kind of a side draft exhaust. It exits out this side. So for right hand users, you know, you're not going to have any air whatsoever. Um, it's nothing significant. You've got exhaust coming out the bottom, if you can see that port. 
Um, so you've got really strong airflow. Um, and then in addition to that, one of the, the most common or heavily air, um, how do I say it? One of the, the most common heavy heat areas for a, for a tool is within the, the, the gear set. So the, the lash of the gear and the, the ring and the, the pinion, that can, if it's too tight, that friction between the gears can contribute to a lot of heat. And noise. Uh, and noise. So there's been a lot of attention paid to the gear set in our tools. And one thing that uh, over, the t over my career, um, I've had many buffing pads uh, actually generate, the pad generates so much heat at the center point of the, of the pad, it actually melts the foam and becomes, it comes kind of a dished uh, pad. So, you know, pads are not an inexpensive proposition if you're, you're doing it professionally. And we, it just occurred to me that why not to capture this 6,000, up to 6,400 RPMs of rotation and, and energy and, and put a fan on it. And that was something, I guess, I don't know, you just, you get lucky every now and you come up with something clever and, and we've integrated it into the tool and it's, uh, what was it, roughly 20 plus percent um, temperature reduction when combined with the gears and everything else that we've done. Yeah. Just to reiterate, 20% yeah. reduction based upon documented testing of the internals. Now there was a cooling percentage for the pad, correct? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. it's over 10%. So you're actually keeping your pad and your paint surface over 10% cooler as well compared to a standard six inch random orbital with similar power. Which obviously with, with both components, we're talking about wear. Yeah. Pads may be consumable, your machine should not be, right? Yeah. So we're trying to, to reduce temperature in that operating. Uh, you know, any, any engine that runs hot is gonna put pressure on its gaskets, eventually is gonna probably overheat. You know, it's gonna drive uh, problems to other parts of a system in an automobile. Yeah. In this sa the same way with this, there's, the heat is going to find its way to uh, more fragile aspects, so we're driving that temperature out. So a yeah. lot of thought there. Yeah. And you're having a safer experience because you're not heating up your paint surface quite as much. So yeah. it's yeah. reducing a little bit of risk there as well. So the, uh, the counterbalance is, uh, again, patented technology, yeah, um, patent, pending, yeah. patent pending technology. Uh, that's a big addition to that. Uh, you want to talk about the backing plates as well because we have yeah. had some questions. Um, so the backing plates are, are a, a major design improvement. So this, we've offered this vented backing plate, a, a rendition of this as an upgrade component to our, our standard GG6 tool. And uh, we were able to integrate this, this plate. In fact, we even improved it um, and, and made it as an OEM equipment to the, to the G9. So it's gonna come with the tool. Some things that, that of course, cool uh, contribute to the cooling is you've got, you can see horizontal, um, or I should say vertical vents, but you also have horizontal vents. And what this plate does is it's got holes from the center, which is where all that heat's being generated, and it migrates outward. So that's, that's one benefit. These are essentially weight matched to the counterbalance to improve the, the smooth operation of the tool. Um, but one other thing that's very special about this plate is that it uses uh, US Velcro branded micro hooks. So um, the quality of the Velcro is just like leaps and bounds better than, than some of the standard backing plates that are on the market. So, well, and, and once again, this isn't off the shelf. This is designed to match our yeah. counterbalance. Um, yeah. So we have had some questions about using our pre-existing plates. Sure. Um, and we will say this emphatically. You can use our previous plates on this machine in the five and six inch form. However, they are not the same weight as the new designs and you might have some added vibration to that. So nothing that's gonna be a, like offensive, but if you're looking for optimal performance, like the, the way it's designed, the way it's intended, then you would you know, ideally use the, the new, new style yeah. plates. Um, that's not a ploy. This is simply no. we're evolving our counterbalance. We expanded it to incorporate that fan um, and as such, it, it changes the center yeah. of, of weight distribution and, and yeah. that affects what it drives down into the plate. So, yeah. um, and again, the machine, we do have a five inch option. We had a question about three inch plates as well. Sure, well, one thing I'll, I'll note before we touch on the three inch plate, cause that has been a, 
I think it's something that we created ourselves. Yes, we did. Really. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> uh, the graphics on this plate were really well thought out. Uh, you know, of course, I had all these crazy ideas, like doing doing wild, crazy stuff, and Nick had to rein me in. Uh, <laughs> well, hold on. Uh, easy, I, like, easy. It was easy. a no. Do it was a tachometer concept. <laughs> hey, don't and get when I secret. used it, I got dizzy, and I couldn't well, endorse that idea. So <laughs> it was a little too much. It was but, super sweet. You should have seen it. Yeah. Um, but this white six inch, uh, and obviously with the, the five inch the same, it's a very, very positive indicator. It's not going to make you nauseous like other ideas, but uh, <laughs> it, 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 you want to see pad rotation uh, for some people that don't do this for a living. Um, you know, high pad rot or even just novice, high pad rotation is going to equate to uh, more effective paint correction. And so by looking at the backing plate, you can see if you've got enough speed turned up on the tool or if you're applying too much pressure or perhaps you're even leaning on the tool one way or another, the pad's not being maintained in a flat way. The lack of rotation, which will be very evident with, by via the graphic, um, will be very clear for you and you can adjust your techniques accordingly. Yeah, I will definitely say just to add on to that. It's tough to stall this plate out. If you have a tool right now that you have difficulty with in those contours and tight areas, this is what you want. It makes it's, it much more user friendly when you're coming into those tough spots. Yeah. So let's address the three inch plate as okay, well. Thank so you. with our previous tool, um, the GG6 Gen 3, we did develop a three inch uh, heavy duty backing plate for that. Part of the reason we were able to do that is that shroud while being metal, which was you know, kind of something we, we got away from, yeah. was uh, more compact. Sure. Granted, it did not contain the counterbalance assembly that we now have, which is, which is wider. Um, but that plate is really dense yeah. um, and also tuned to that throw and counterbalance. Now, will it adapt to this tool? Yes, but the same thing we said about undo vibration, again, not a game changer, not gonna shake your arms off, yeah. but it's just not ideally tuned for that. Yeah. Likewise, you'll have a little bit more shroud overhang with that three inch plate than you would in our previous generation tool. Yeah, yeah. it will expose some of the counterbalance as well. So that's another you know, yeah. safety issue there if you're trying to run a three. I yeah. think with the throw and a five inch plate, you're gonna find plenty of uh, you know maneuverability. And likewise, if you're buying a G9 and you retain your older tool, just make that tool into your three inch platform. Yeah, that's a great, great idea. I mean, what, I don't know, it's a modest investment. You can convert that into a three inch polisher that'll get you out of any tight spaces. Yeah. And if you're worried, we've got solutions, so. <laughs> okay, uh, we've had a couple questions about weight and specifically because of the reduced weight, do we have to add more pressure? You wanna talk about weight and balance and, and just pressure. what the overall changes were there? So any, you know, any tool, you wanna have a, a nice balance at the, the middle point and you'll just find that this thing just naturally uh, just, just rests and, and doesn't fight you. Um, I'll, I'll say personally, I mean, it's roughly a half a pound uh, reduction in weight and it's not significant, significant really enough to contribute or, or to diminish, I should say, the, the correcting um, that you would get from just allowing the tool to do the work. Um, so. Also some of the weight, because it's a little bit better centered, some of that tends to, uh, fall on or over the pad. Yeah. So you still have uh, some weight kind of centered or Absolutely. enough above it's, that pad. Te it's te the pivot points teetered a hair to, to, the, to the front rather the back. So and the increase in pad rotation and power as well is gonna mitigate any of that. Yeah, it'll definitely do that. Okay, so <laughs> big questions about ergonomics. Yeah, uh, so I think we all have a tool or two in our garage, right? Uh, I mean, I don't know about you, Nick, but <laughs> I've got cabinets and drawers and just, Couple. yeah. <laughs> and I think even, even, in, even in the house, like uh, I recently purchased a, a fairly nice vacuum and you know, I was pretty excited about it. I've been saving up for this thing. Vacuuming and sucks, so if I, you have a nice vacuum, I know, it's it totally that sucks. Better, at least. I really like it, it's my, <laughs> it's my yeah. But one of the things that I don't appreciate in this rather expensive vacuum is that by the time I'm done, my my the, my knuckle is is bright red and it's it's actually worn the skin out because it's it's got a very poor ergonomic uh, aspect to it. There's not it's not well thought through. 
And um, I don't know how, how far you want to go into the story as far as how we kind of drive well, I'd that. love to show some of our earlier iterations of the design. Oh, man, that's it embarrassing, evolved, okay? man. It's embarrassing. So once again, we, <laughs> we did enough. design this tool from the ground up. <laughs> yeah. Um, it started as a drawing. Jeffrey got some heat about the drawing for a while, what? but come on, oh, man. it was a great drawing. It was a That's great drawing. Only <laughs> because they wanted this short polisher and not not this long polisher. So no, the only no. thing you could have done better is maybe <laughs> markers instead of colored pencils. Uh, at time. So hey, man, I I just am doing the best I can. I just I have have the experience, but uh, to do the drawing like some uh, famous car car designers that we're we we're familiar <laughs> with is not not going to happen. Yeah. So. But uh, somehow or another, you, you, you can put enough ideas down on paper that the, our, our talented partners understand how to translate it. So um, yeah, this is how it originally started off. And I'll, I'll just say from, from the process, you, you not only look at the, the current polishers on the market and you say, hey, how can I make this better? Or what, what, if I were a polisher, detailer, or somebody having fun in my garage on the weekend, what don't I like about this particular tool? And I think most people will find at least something that they don't appreciate, um, you know, whether it's an angle on the tool or the type of material it's made out of, um, the fit and finish of certain components. Um, and, and so that's one thing we do is we look at current polishers on the market. Um, but we also, I think, you know, for me, I, I'll just go hang out at the hardware store for like the day and just, I know. Who doesn't you, like you don't, doing that? You, well, that is, it's true, but I mean, you don't know. I, I you agree. go to the hardware store and you hang out and you look at every tool on the market, not just polishers, but grinders, sanders, you know, circular saws, whatever. And you look at the things that, that have been done really well and you're like, I like that. Yeah. And, and it doesn't mean you're going to copy it. You look at ways and how they approach things and then you try to integrate your own unique approach to it. Yeah. Um, and that's... I think what we've done. Well, um, so basically, take us from the beginning. So this definitely is a boxier shape that we started with. Sure. That um, incorporated a couple concepts right away. Yeah, we, you know, you you don't start out of the gate with your fin finished good, right? You, yeah. It's an iterate iterative pop process, and that's why it takes a year or two to to do it. So it's uh, uh, to do it right, anyways. And for me personally, you know, you look at how your hand just naturally hold is, is if you just kind of let your hand go loose you'll you'll notice that it has a natural curve and larger diameter polishers tend to be less you, know, you have less control over them um, that's why they don't put you know uh, large diameters on a pistol grip on a on a pistol because you you don't have control so um, the boss certainly was I think well or well appreciated um, the the ergonomics of that and we, we figured out a way to put this, this pistol grip style approach um, into a small block box. And that's really one of the things that drove the, the detachable cord, uh, one of the many. Um, but yeah. This overall dimensional yeah. consideration. Yeah. Relative Just to a lot of our storage infrastructure and store and stores that are used, selling our, tool, our tools now. And also, can I speak to this too? Uh, yeah. Our new manufacturer, they make their own motors, right? Yeah. So we literally were able to spec a motor based upon output and dimension that we yeah. wanted. Yep. Yeah. Um, in order, you know, you have the same amount of wire, but you have to, you can configure it in a shorter, uh, shorter, uh, platform with a, a larger diameter but um, the the pistol grip is just like for me that's my preference um, having input into it that's kind of where we, we went I think you guys are all on totally on board with it but we're in we're all in yeah man but uh, so I don't know Sam the some other things that you you look at is just how the how the tool uh, conforms to your like I said earlier conforms to your hand and um, also, your your position of the tool. When you're working on a car, there's it's nice to have different uh, ways to hold the polisher um, because if you if you're constantly holding one 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 way, um, it can contribute to fatigue. Um, it also can contribute to like a reduction in your control. You you don't have the ability to to control the tool the way you want to because it puts you at an awkward angle. So well, on modern vehicles, you're forced to hold it in different ways and you're not just polishing a flat yeah. surface like a hood. You're getting down yeah. on the rocker panels, going over you know, yeah. curves, you got curvy porches behind us. You got plenty of pillars. Love, right. It takes Dang a it. lot of uh, technique to get yeah. into all the tight spots. So. 
So yeah, so you, this just kind of gave you the, the rough idea of the platform, and then you start to look at touch points. This is being a 3D printed model that you know, obviously came from a CAD, CAD drawing or two. Uh, two. On there too. Yeah, look, like we got some little Sharpie <laughs> innovations yeah. there, so. Yeah. You can see that it's got like the Frankenstein ears coming out of the side yeah. on our first version our, there. Our brush ports were a little bit more exaggerated on that first concept. Where if you had that, you know, if that were what we went to market with, if you're working with a tool and you're engaging in that sharp edge, it could, it could contribute to like the, the issue I have with the vacuum. Yeah, yeah, or it's at least just gonna bug you. It looks yeah. it looks funny. So, so think, jump ahead. Yeah. Uh, this is the second concept that. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you can see right away mm -hmm. that's where we start to get the the hand grip concept on the shroud. Yeah. At this point, uh, the internal components uh, have been have been specced uh, and, and engineered. And those are this tool is shaped in a way that it can it accommodates those components. You can probably speak better to the Bugatti, you know, design where they they started off with essentially the body and said, right? Yeah. And, and said, make this car go 200 plus miles an hour and figure out how to put all that stuff inside of it, right? Yeah. So, you know, there's in in the tool design, there's a couple different approaches that you can take, and in doing that, it it can it can cause trouble later. Um, you know, so. Well, the other thing too from the boss, we learned that a thinner body gave you a lot. You could grip it, you know, in the middle of the body and support yeah. those grips. Not have a slick, yep. hard plastic casing. Oh, we could man. put double shot rubber there. Yeah. Uh, likewise, just the uh, thinking through where else you you grab and hold the tool. Now, one thing you'll all notice: we don't have a D handle for this thing. Yeah. The if you look at how you know polishing with a D handle, one of the things that you'll find is that you're at the you're at a very high center of gravity. And you tend to lose a little uh, level of control. You know, you reduce your control. So, being lower, lower center of gravity at a lower portion of the tool, you, you're not going to be so tipsy turvy, and you'll have a lot more control. But you just look at the tool, and your first three fingers fit perfectly in in that area. And and you have to look at, hey, it fits my hand, but what about a six foot four, six foot seven, uh, you know, gentleman, or or maybe somebody who's on a smaller platform. Um, and we, then, uh, we have the range of five foot to seven foot in terms of our yeah, employees yeah, here. Yeah. So and that's, we tested a lot of hand sizes in between. Yeah. You definitely have to, you know, it's not just, it's not all about you or me as designers or product developers. It has to uh, accommodate, you know, the most, most average size anyways. But yeah. um, down to the angle of the lockout button. So this, this trigger is, is very comfortable and it's, it's progressive, easy to to uh, apply, but once you've engaged with the panel and you're, you're comfortable with your process, you're gonna apply, it's very in alignment with your thumb, so you can lock that out and you're ready to go. Um, other areas, so you, you know, the, the one area is, is to stretch on, on a hood and have that extended reach. The tool runs so smoothly that you'll have more than adequate control and be able to reach out over those F-350 hoods and roofs, that kind of thing. What I found too is I, <laughs> I never have been able to hold a polisher like this, but I actually really enjoyed the comfort of stretching with one arm and being able to keep pressure yeah. Yeah. while wrapped around the shroud. And, and I mean, that, that yeah. was a nice feature. Yeah. You get a lot of leverage when you're going like that, yeah. one-handed. And when you're stretching, obviously you're stretching. Sure. You know, it's the center of a hood. You're probably gonna do more overlapping. Yeah. But even so, just being able to stretch and impart pressure, that allows consistent results uh, throughout your process. There's a, you'll notice the, the rubber indents here. These are grip points and then we put rubber on, on opposing corners of the body, and that also adds, you know, plastic with your hands. If they're getting sweaty, they can be, the plastic can become slippery. These grip points, these are intentionally put there, not just for the design or the, the appearance, but um, to add to the function of that control. Um, so you've got your, your grip points on the bottom, um, so you can run the tool like so. Uh, you can also, as, as Nick pointed out, You'll notice this almost looks like an upside down wine glass. Um, and that, that just is a more comfortable, rounded um, engagement with that leading shroud. So that you have to make a choice. The, we went with a larger shroud, which allows for that very comfortable, um, high control space. 
Um, but we also lost, you know, the opportunity to use a three inch backing plate. Yeah. So you have to decide what's going to be more beneficial, what people are going to appreciate the most. And again, we'll, you know, we're, we're working, we're working on it. We're so. working on some stuff. Yeah, and then you've got that nice flare too, which helps prevent, if you're putting a lot of pressure, it's going to keep you from slipping down onto the backing plate or anything like that. There's really not an uncomfortable way that you can hold yeah. this tool. Yeah. Yeah. I love the speed dial too. The double-sided dial is really nice. You can, you know, lock your trigger. I like hitting it with my forefinger, or you can come in with your thumb. So there's a lot of options there as well, depending on how you have it oriented and held. Okay, two quick questions. Yeah, man. Uh, Umberto Ponce asks, would there be extra cords for sale? The answer is yes. Yeah. In two sizes. So you can buy an extra 10-foot cord. It comes with one uh, for the $149 price. Um, and then you can buy a 25 foot cord and yes we have those individually for sale yeah um, so once again if you were to if you were to have a really nice cat come into your garage <laughs> and chew through your cord guess what you don't have to replace the entire machine uh you can just call us and get another cord it's really really nice feature yeah. to have yeah 25 foot is 29.99 10 foot is 19.99 so the other uh, thing too nick the the six or the the 25 foot cord has a 16 gauge uh, cord, so it's heavy duty. Um, that's obviously to accommodate that let longer run a wire. So we we've offered our heavy duty or our 25 foot corded orbital um, as a second uh, option all these years. But now we'll be just offering the 10 foot equipped G9, and then if you want to upgrade it, you just slide the 25 footer in and rock and roll. Okay, yeah. so. We yeah, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, it's a great way to eliminate any power reduction if you're running an undersized extension cord. It is always best to not run an extension cord with a power tool so you don't have that second fail point or power reduction. So, so we do have some, uh, we have had some questions uh, from folks that are just learning about us. Um, and just a quick clarification for those folks that are watching that, that aren't too adept with, with polishing yet. Dual action, random orbital. Same, same, same meaning. Okay. Dual action, random orbital mean the same thing. So your random orbit is where you get the dual actions. There's yeah. two a there's two actions. It's not only spinning, that's a free spin, but you're also gonna have that forced rotation orbit with the motor there. Off center. So again, dual action and random orbital are equivalent. This is a dual action polisher. It is also a random orbital polisher. So same difference. Um, and yeah. Well, the purpose behind that is to keep the abrasive from passing over the same surface over and over, right? So it's a safer experience. Heat dissipation, right? No single yeah. point of contact. Less risk of swirl marks or no risk of causing swirl marks like yeah. you can with a rotary tool. And I'll, I'll just, just to clarify, Sam, I know you, you'd mentioned for, you'd in, incorporated force. So there's forced rotation orbitals and those are gear driven. So they're they're going to constantly rotate uh, or in a in a constant RPM, and but they're 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 throwing traditionally at an eight millimeter orbit. This has a, a loose uh, counterbalance that allows uh, essentially the 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 back and forth motion, which drives that abrasive across the panel in conjunction with the pad, and that mechanical abrasion of the finish essentially is what removes the the film build that removes scratches and so forth. So. The, the drawback to forced rotation, in my opinion, is that they kind of like the tail wags a dog and the tool kind of runs you. So if you're doing that all day long, it can really contribute to fatigue. Whereas this tool, you can literally run it across the hood with one hand. It's, it's super, super um, easy to manage and control. The drawback that, that can happen with um, a traditional orbital, uh, most of them or a lot of them historically will stop spinning when you encounter like a a body line and that's a good thing if you don't want to burn uh, body you know high high body lines or if, um, edges, right. edges and and also moldings that type of thing uh, force rotation just continually powers through so this tool uh, trust me the the pad rotation that you're gonna get out of it will blow your mind like it's 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 very very powerful in that regard so a couple of other quick questions the weight of the G9 is less than the previous generation, approximately five pounds or approximately a half pound lighter. Um, we had another question about um, uh, noise, how quiet it is. And we haven't had a chance to talk about gear set or yeah. bearings. You want to talk about noise? Yeah. Uh, so uh, 
during my trips, um, I've actually had the opportunity to visit the, the gear supplier that uh, has been in business for over 30 years. And again, the, it, it just blew me away when I walked into this place. The floors were honestly as, as clean as uh, Grio's, Richard Grio's uh, shop floors. I mean, you, could, you can eat off of them. And it, it just, it speaks to you. It wasn't like they just swept up the place, you know, for my arrival. It, that's how it was ran. And the gears um, that, you know, the consistency in, in machining gears is very, very critical. And there can be a lot of variance in that um, from the, the type of steel they use to the hardening of the, the steel, the tempering that they, that they put into the steel to improve the durability. The gear lash, uh, one, you know, it's, if tools and, and um, components aren't really uh, QC'd and the, the specs aren't measured precisely and um, proper quality control measures aren't taken, you can get different variances in your batches and that can contribute to a, no like a noisy machine or um, a high pitch whine or a frequency that's not really appealing to, the, to your ears. So um, that was a lot, of, um, a lot of thought went into the gear set that went into this machine. It's very quiet uh, relative to the others on there. Um, the other is the bearings. Um, you know, we, we um, really looked at the bearing sets and the bearings, uh, for example, I know this is off, off topic, but they're very, very low friction. So that, um, that's another contributor to the heat reduction because the, the motor's not having to work as hard to maintain that RPM. But even the bearings can contribute to noise if you don't have that loose rotation because of the friction that's going on internally. Um, so that's what about the grease? Yeah, that's a so the cool feature. you know, the, even the grease at our factory um, is precisely dispensed via a computer-controlled dispensing machine, and we've even uh, you know I thought, hey, how cool would it be to use like mobile mobile oil or mobile grease and um, it's got a very, um, how do you say that again? Molybdenum. molybdenum I can't pronounce it. I know, I know what it has. Molybdenum it, disulfide. Yeah, yeah, so that, that also contributes to a longevity of the gear set that will also... Um, well, and the longevity of the grease, right? It's not going to dry up. Yeah. And it's going to be more yeah. temperature tolerant. It's not going to shear. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that molybdenum disulfide is pretty crazy stuff. It's actually the same spec uh, gear grease that is used in the burr fields on my 80 series Land Cruiser, which is a... Yeah big axle on big truck and yeah. it's tough stuff so we For have sure. a buddy that uh, is watching the live stream his name's uh, Jim Williamson he oh man he, Jim. Hey, Jim. <laughs> he asked if you're sweating yet <laughs> uh, hang on hang on let me yeah just uh, a touch okay. <laughs> all right the make more good deodorant good. today at least two more clarifications <laughs> Adam Barron he asked if this was a forced rotation <laughs> it is not forced rotation we are simply stating that the orbit is essentially forced by the counterbalance it is not forced yeah. It's not a yeah, gear-driven yeah, yeah. orbital. Yeah, my to clarify what I was saying, the, the forced <laughs> orbit is part of that dual action. So you have a forced orbit, free spin, a forced rotation, or a, a yeah. like the flex. Yeah. This is gear-driven spin as well as a gear-driven orbit. Yeah. yeah. It is not the exact same. All right. Uh, so this is still pretty free spinning. It, it's not going to steer you around. Yeah. Um, okay. One really quick question, and then we're going to get to some of the winners for the cool. first giveaway. Let's do it. Um, once again, you are, uh, we have seen a ton of questions come in. We really appreciate uh, your support. You're not annoying any of us. No. Uh, we are picking out some good questions. We're seeing them. So uh, we had a, a great question. Uh, two people asked on the live stream, how did we keep the price the same and, and make all these improvements? I have a great perspective on this. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Um, so twofold. One, our current manufacturing partner is wholly vertically integrated. This is not somebody that is grabbing parts from different manufacturers and widget factories. It is made in one place. They are winding their motors. They are casting the mold uh, of the body. They are uh, you know, pulling some components such as bearings in, yeah. but most of the major components of this tool are made within their building. That creates uh, economies of scale yeah. and cost savings that are not uh, present in an assembler as opposed to a manufacturer. Exactly. Uh, yeah, they, it, it's, it's also really cool as a, in terms of product development, you really have a lot of flexibility in, in that you can, you can you know, come up with a harebrained idea, challenge the engineer, and 
him being as, as brilliant as he is, can, can think about it and, and then go out into the shop and machine the part while you're there and then put it into a tool and go, go test it. Like those kind of uh, collaborations can occur when you have that. But to answer the question, um, you know, it, that it's, it is for me pretty surprising that we were able to, to, to offer the tool at the price we are. And that's not a spiel. That's just like, it's kind of surprising. Well, yeah. One benefit what it is. of a growing company is growing buying power as well, right? Which yeah. enables yeah. us to keep that cost down. Absolutely. So. Yeah, it is not hyperbole when we say the amount of GG6 Gen 3s that we are selling yeah. uh, is enough to pretty much attract anybody in the world to want to do business with us. and. Likewise, that gives us the purchase, the purchasing power to, uh, you know, tell somebody we're going to sell so many of these tools and we need it to cost yeah. this much because we want our customers to pay this much. Yeah. Um, so again, you, this, there's everything has been touched, everything has been improved. We really just found a partner that is uh, with us for the long term yeah, and knows fortunate. the importance of again the the, the price that. A, a, customer will pay and is willing to pay they're watching yeah. right now and so if, say hi guys <laughs> yeah. and if you're worried about that low price point i urge you to buy one try it out I, let us yeah. know what you think it's covered so if for some reason you feel that you know it's cheap and i don't want to use it or whatever we'll take it back but i know you're not gonna feel that way so yeah um so i wonder if these will sell out uh we're, we're hoping they do. We are making a lot of them right now. Uh, we have plenty stateside. Uh, they're doing very well. We're happy with it. We're happy that they're received. There's an important thing we haven't talked about yet, and then we're going to go back to our, to our four pre-submitted winners. Right. If you currently own a Griot's Garage branded random orbital or an <laughs> orbital that you have bought from us and you want the G9, you have the ability to upgrade to this tool. Um, it is not... Uh, free, but it is a program we have set up to alleviate uh, the stress of wanting to get the latest and greatest. So it's something we're offering to our customers. You do have to call in to our call center or come to our Tacoma retail store to participate. You must have a functioning tool um, and there are different prices relative to the age and condition of the machine that we receive back. Um, so we're hoping that you all get a chance to participate in that. Um, we made this machine for you. Uh, we also made it for us, right? We, we wanted our machine to be better. Uh, but at the end of the day, you guys are our customers. Uh, like you said, we're, our yeah. motivation is making everybody happy so they can have fun doing what most people would presume is a chore. Uh, if you are empowered enough to go do this and take care of your own cars, you want the best and we're going to give it to you. So yeah. there's some sweet incentives with that buyback program too. So call us, check it out if you're at all on the fence. Yeah, we will take care of you. All right. Um, so again, it's currently available directly through griotsgarage.com. I know some of our wholesale partners will be getting inventory at the end of the month. Yeah. Um, and then likewise, uh, our Tacoma store, or you can pick it up in our Indianapolis lobby. Um, and again, we're, we're, we're so excited about this tool. Yeah, we did have one question about oh how long from start to finish to, to the start of this project until we received inventory. I, I've had so many sleepless nights, Nick, I don't even know. It's, it's, all, <laughs> it's frankly like all a blur. Well, I can tell <laughs> you, I you, know, <laughs> I know uh, it started in March 2016 for us. Yeah. Um, and we really sunk our teeth into it uh, towards the end of 2017, and now we're in September of 2019. Uh, and we launched it yeah. three days ago, four days ago. I don't even know. We've all <laughs> been losing a lot of sleep up Nine, to this launch. What day is it? Yeah, we've, uh, <laughs> we've, got, we've done a lot of work. We've had so much help from our wonderful organization and our wonderful yeah. partners. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really excited about this tool. So let's get to some winners. How about that? Oh, let's do it, let's okay. do it. The sleepless nights aren't over. All right, so way. we've got four <laughs> winners. We've got some pretty quick questions, and then again, as soon as we get through these, start firing away. Start firing right now. We want to hear your questions. It doesn't have to be just about the G9. You've got Jeff here. You can prod him about anything you want. Be, be gentle. We like fun we, questions, too. Yeah, yeah we, we, love, uh, we love anything. And again, we, we, do ask, we can answer some process-related questions, too. Um, we have, we've got a lot more to talk about about the G9. We're not done yet. But here's some winners, all right? 
So this was a, really, if you make us laugh, we're, we're probably going to give you a tool. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, so Good we chance. got one um, via Instagram from the handle house5212. All right. Easily the probably all time yeah. best. Yeah, one of, one of the best. Okay, so do you all recommend using the standard PFM towel or the extra large PFM towel to dry up the tears of the people who pay double or triple for a German or Italian machine only to see this phenomenal and equally capable machine release at this price? <laughs> Will we be offering PFM multi-packs to resolve this issue? Maybe change the name of the PFM towels to PTM paid too much. Oh, come on now. Let's not get too carried <laughs> They're away. They're ultra it. absorbent. These will soak up a lot of tears. Yeah. So. <laughs> We've been putting them on. I've got a seven month old. I haven't really stitched up a diaper yet, but I've definitely <laughs> yeah. thought about it. But uh, yeah. so for making us laugh, laugh House 5212, uh, you're getting a machine. So uh, congrats, bud. Direct message us on Instagram and we'll get your shipping information and we'll send you one of these bad boys. Yeah, buddy. Okay. The next one also comes from Instagram. Uh, from a user gar.yn. Gosh, screen names are weird. Come on, what, you'll <laughs> have to tell us a story. Gary on N must if, have if been. If your name is Gary N, I guess I understand. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah but, that's that's okay. pretty intuitive. All right, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Maybe. what is the weirdest thing you've had to use an orbital on? Oh, you go first, Sam. Oh, uh, probably uh, when I worked in the retail store here. We spent a few days polishing epoxy, spilled epoxy paint off of our storage room floor. That was a little unconventional. Other than that, probably a subway tile in my kitchen. Yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. Not too uh, weird, but. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> not. How about you? How about you? So I've got two. One, when I was a young buck in the retail store in Fife, I had this guy come in and he had um, somebody I think an ex-girlfriend had thrown a bucket of house paint, like heavy nice. latex nice. house paint, all over his hood. And Sorry. he was just desperate. I could just see, oh. like, the face. So I, I spent like some ghost, time with probably. him. And mm. literally, we were just taking everything we could and just, you know, buffing on it. We were doing ton and sap remover. And I was just like, look, I'm going to put 3M adhesive remover on this pad, and we're going to go for it. We're just going to try and cut this paint off. Didn't work. Um, and then I've also, uh, I've also polished, oh, man. Uh, Airstream trailer, that's a weird one. And then, uh, bad Airstream like a trailer white too, huh? vinyl floor. I hate those. Um, yeah. Like on a boat. I've had to, like, because they get all scuffed yeah. up and yeah. just trying to get that out for a, for a boat sail. Sure. That is a terrible place to think you have to polish a floor, for goodness sake. Yeah. Hey, well, if you hang out at Grail's Garage, you come back here in the shop area, Richard's got people polishing the floors with orbitals. Yeah, if, I've if, seen it. It's <laughs> if you want to work crazy. at Grail's Garage and you have minimal orbital skills, we do start you polishing the floors. We got yeah. a lot of painted floor out <laughs> the, here. The so. red doors, too, the, the, they're all enameled. So for you me, don't wanna, you don't want to get on Richard's bad side. Yeah, he'll, you will pay. <laughs> That's why that cord thing had to work out. All right, but. what's the weirdest <laughs> orbital? Or weirdest yeah, thing? yeah. Uh, for me, the weirdest thing that I've ever polished on uh, is a casket uh, at a casket manufacturer. So that's nice. a little, and, and it was a tough one because this, this was a waiter. So definitely one up to us there. Oh it, it went out that afternoon to the to the mortuary. Oh so. wow! Yeah, I mean, if yeah, it's a little, it was okay. a little creepy. Yeah. Jeff takes the cake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess I'd, I'd figure I'd beat you guys. Okay, if you're going in the ground. You don't want swirl marks. Gar dot y n <laughs> Gary me, n. Uh, direct message us on Instagram, or we'll do the same to you. We'll get you one of these G9 shipped. Okay, this is another one that really made us laugh because it's something we mentioned, uh, and it's something we really were <laughs> kind of just ready to get over Ugh. and just. For, for yeah. as much effort as we put into developing stuff like this, when we see you guys recognize this, it makes us so happy. Yeah. Um, because we really do try and avoid just the rubber stamp straight to market. Uh, yeah, we yeah. never do that. Yeah. Um, and stickers a really go a long way at disguising things. I yeah. don't say that much. Well, colors, colors stickers, you can, you know, there's you... a lot of weird stuff out there right now. Okay, yeah. so. How come no one has found the AliExpress, meaning Alibaba, Express model of this DA yet? Can you <laughs> can you answer that question, please, Jeffrey? Yeah, because uh, uh, it it's it's started from a piece of paper and an idea and yeah. and how to how to get to something better and 
Because it's, it's not, completely there's not, ours. There's not one thing on there that's uh, not ours. And Feel free isn't. to go shopping. <laughs> yeah. we yeah. yeah. searching for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, even down to the double shot rubber, just putting our car logo on it for yeah, added man. grip. Um, you know, to have fun in your garage appears as often as we can. Yeah. I mean, just this is a lot of care, a lot of love put into a tool that most people, again, believe is a commodity or at least seems to have become one because there are a lot, lead, of, a lot, lot of, of cheap imitators out there. Yeah. Um, and we really pride ourselves in the design and development of this tool. It is ours. Uh, nobody can take that away from us. For Just sure. like our liquids. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so uh, for that question, Grenade 89, you're getting a G9. Uh, on to you know, maybe you'll export it back out and see if somebody copies it, but uh, it's going <laughs> to take you a long time to match this bad boy. Yeah. Okay, and then Bradley Timmons from Facebook asks, what's your favorite part about working at Grio's Garage? You go first. Oh, that one's easy for me, the, the people. Yeah. I, I have a lot of friends that constantly complain about their coworkers and all of that, and uh, it sounds corny, but all of, I, would, I would say most all of my coworkers are, are equally my friends, you know, and that's something really yeah. special to say. Yeah. I even met one of my best friends at this company, so that's pretty cool too. Yeah, no and doubt. Yeah. Um, being able to work with you guys and Well, I yeah. I love this company. I mean my, my dad told me not to come work here and I just really couldn't deny my destiny. I I love cars. I was the guy that was laying on his back at the real estate office answering all the car questions and <laughs> there's just nothing else I can imagine doing. And I know that we have uh just this long-term vision that puts a lot of pressure on us where we want to be, but at the same time gives us so much freedom to do things like this. Yeah. You know, again, if, if they gave us three months to make this machine, it'd be a piece of crap. It'd probably be something with a sticker on it. Yeah. That's not our style. So the emphasis on creating something that uh, not only uh, will just represent our brand and the thing that we all care about so much in this company and our customers, um, but also just knowing that we're gonna wait till it's right, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. and, and get it right. That's such Absolutely. a refreshing feeling as opposed to this rush to market, commoditized world we live in. Yeah, get yeah it I mean, done, we get can it truly done. be passionate about what we're putting out and proud. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't think we have enough time like to, for me to, <laughs> to say all the reasons I love working here, um, but they, they let me be myself, <laughs> which is, we didn't bring any Kleenex. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, man. Is this a uh, family? It's a family. Um, it's not just the Grio family. It's everybody that that fills these walls. And uh, to be able to um, like not even really have a job. It's not a job. It's just having fun. Um, yeah, I, I got I, to bring my five-year-old yeah. to work yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I, some products. Uh, there's a lot awesome. of babies running around now. We got the next generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll say the the one thing for me is I, I I generally I'm I'm pretty fortunate. I get paid to have fun in my garage. You know that's our that's our motto, our slogan, and um, you know being able to work from home and you know, as a as a detailer and like come up with something like that and have the resources to do it is yeah. pretty awesome. So. It's easy to wake up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Um, those are our four winners, so thank you, Congrats. Bradley. Uh, we will reach out to you via Facebook, uh, and we'll send in you four guys who submitted questions. Tools, keep firing away. We're seeing tons of questions come in. We really love the interaction. We hope you guys are as excited about this tool. It seems like you are, um, as we are. We had one question, and I think it might be worthy of uh, awarding our first live question. <laughs> before that, well, before we even done, it's not oh, come good. On. Well, we'll put it in the yeah, we'll put it in the queue. Put, put it in the hopper. Let's okay. Um, one more thing, <laughs> just to reiterate, this tool replaces the GG6. This is not uh, kind of a new tool. It replaces an outgoing tool, um, so it definitely occupies um, that shorter throw, enthusiast grade yet professionally capable yeah. machine. Um, it totally replaces it. That yeah. machine is no longer available through Grio's Garage. Not even Gen on the Gen 3, website. right? Yeah, that, is, so that is, is the third generation. This is now Gen 4, so. Yeah. Okay, um, we also had, uh, as part of the over 500 questions that came in, 
I want to venture to say that there are 40 plus no kidding. where people no. are confusing the shape of this tool and thinking it is a boss long throw orbital. So can you describe yeah. the difference between this particular tool and the long throws? Sure. Uh, just, just categorically. So the, the orbit size is, is going to determine the paint correction ability. Uh, I won't say so much the ability. Uh, but also, but the speed, um, the speed at which you can remove those those paint defects, uh, you know, you can you can achieve uh, you know removal of sanding mark scratches with a eight or nine millimeter orbit. It just takes a little bit longer to do the work. So um, there was a couple questions. Well, I'll, I'll I'll focus. I know that's hard for me. So <laughs> we're doing uh, great, Jeff. We've got great. we've got nine millimeter now. Uh, we have fifteen and twenty one. And obviously 21 being throwing 7 eighths of an inch has a lot more energy that's being inflicted, if you will, onto the panel um, and that removes paint much quicker. So there's, there's pluses and minuses to everything. Uh, the shorter strokes, like the, the, the 9 millimeter G9, uh, are going to be highly capable at removing uh, paint, you know, paint correction, removing defects. But on the other hand, it's, they're, they're more suitable for applying uh, waxes and sealants. Or all in ones. Or all in ones. So, just uh, I'm not a chemist, but I, I've been taught enough by our chemists to know a little bit or be able to talk smart, if you will. Uh, our waxes generally, you hear the term synthetic polymers, and those are essentially what are what are referred to as film formers. And there, as I mentioned, there's pluses and minuses. So, a nine millimeter tool will allow you to apply those films to the panel in an even fashion. I don't know if you've ever experienced an application of a wax and seen like almost track marks, circular track marks is like the best way I can describe it. In the, in the trail. Yeah, after you've wiped all the wax off, you see these in the panel, especially on darker finishes. And that if you're using a long throw machine like a 15 millimeter or 21, they are not suitable for applying waxes or sealants because um, in most cases, because they, they essentially cure that film in a, in a very fast fashion. Um, they're supposed to cure over a period of 24 hours, uh, you know, through all sorts of voodoo magic and chemi or, you know, exposure to moisture and all that. But the, the important thing to recognize is that you're always gonna wanna use an eight or a nine millimeter orbital or smaller to apply your waxes and sealants because you're gonna have a, an even application of those films. So again, this is a pretty versatile tool with that in mind. Extremely versatile. So you can do waxing, you can definitely do significant correction. Yeah. You may not have the extreme speed in your correction process as a long throw orbital offers, but you definitely have that lower end capability of waxes and sealants. So yeah. this is a great tool if you only own one tool. Um, it still has a place in a professional's arsenal. However, if you're getting into detailing, and uh, we had another clarifying question. Is it good for beginners? Of course it is. It's great for beginners. Absolutely. Um, you can modify this tool and again, just, just play with the speed, work your way up um, and get really comfortable. Um, so we are gonna have to start picking some, some winners because we're gonna be out of time pretty soon. Uh, we have been crazy talking and talking and talking an hour and 15 minutes has gone by. So um, do you agree on that first one? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> okay, all right, so the true Adonis asks, Will the new G9 help cure my obsessive compulsive disorder or at least lessen it? <laughs> no, it'll yeah. probably make it worse. I'm pretty sure it's going to make it worse. <laughs> so you, you have a choice. You can go out in the garage and, you know, not really have fun. <laughs> you know, I don't know about you, but that's, that's, that's not really how we want to approach things. So the one thing that you'll find with this is it's going to just, I think personally, you're going to find you're going to get the thing done quicker. Uh, it's going to be a more ergonomic experience, going to be more comfortable. Vibrations like really low, uh, so it's just a great experience. So OCD, there's no cure for that, buddy. Believe me, I know. <laughs> but the true Adonis, yeah. uh, you can pain. either email yeah. us at social at griosgarage.com with your shipping information. You're going to get a G9, bud. So yeah, uh, congrats. We're, we're kind of poking the bear. We hope your OCD is minimized, but we don't believe it because yeah, <laughs> uh, we all suffer from it as well. So good luck. You can call us for uh Yeah, you consoling. cry on our shoulders yeah, if you, you want. Can. Yeah, <laughs> we, we know how it is. OK, good one? I did have another one uh, that is personally, I, I'd love the chance to talk to it. Um, it 
and you guys can ask me, it's, it's totally different, but it, it asks where's the, what is the origin of the name Griot? Oh, and I, I think it's pretty cool. So yeah. it, is, it is a French name. Uh, so my, my great grandparents uh, immigrated into, uh, into America. They actually settled in the St. Louis area. But Griot um, is a French word, but in, in the closest like word equivalent in French is griot. It's, uh, uh, wow, I just butchered that. But it's, <laughs> it's cherries. But primarily in a lot of the colonized uh, areas in, in, in Africa that were, that were French had colonized, yeah. a griot was an African storyteller. Oh, nice. And, you know, we just spent a week doing personality tests, and apparently I got extrovert. <laughs> Uh, so I think it all makes sense, and I think it's a pretty appropriate name. <laughs> yeah. So um, whoever asked that question, I can't remember here, but you're going to win a G9 as well, uh, selfishly. <laughs> yeah. You're going to put that out, of, take that out of your budget. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to get one of them. So um, let's see. We've got a couple other questions. Keep firing away, guys. We're having a great time. Um, There's still a chance. Why? Um, oh, uh, here. This is not a... a you're not going to win a G9, yeah, but I sorry. just want a quick question here. <laughs> we all hire a high, high school student at your Tacoma location? Yes. Yes. Come apply. Yeah, we are hiring at our Tacoma store location. We love hiring young guys. Yeah. Sam and I both started in our store, um, and we've worked our way up through the company. So it's, awesome. uh, it's a great place to come, gain some experience. There are many uh, pathways to ascend through our company. Uh, that start in the retail store. So super fun up. and rewarding job too. Yeah, some of my funnest times. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So again, um, let's see. Once again, somebody asked about the buyback program. You must call in uh, to our one eight hundred number one eight hundred three four five five seven eight nine, or come to our Tacoma location uh, to get more information about that. Once again, there's some price point differences. It is something we're doing for you guys to reward your loyalty to our brand and get you the best, uh, the best possible tool for, uh, to enjoy your time in the garage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Two more? Two more. We got two more winners. Okay. Let's see. How <laughs> I like the comment about my hair. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that comes from Fab. Good. Fab, we know <laughs> that uh, you've got an inside line here at Griot's Garage, and you've got a G9 on the way already, buddy. But yeah. we really appreciate your loyalty. Um, and, yeah. I think, uh, Jeff and Todd might need a little hairstyle competition. Yeah. What? Todd's what? was looking pretty good, too. Oh, nice. <laughs> I can't keep up with Nick, man. That Okay. All right, stop. Uh, we had, so we had one other question. Uh, Gregory has been asking it a couple times. Um, <laughs> we talked about that this week. Uh, yeah, we've actually been, we had our chemist in-house this oh, week, yeah. so we've been talking about it. We were, they were doing, she was doing a lecture on safety and, and, you know, taking care of ourselves when we're working with products. And uh, the question is, do, do your products taste as good as they smell? And, uh, and I that, can, was, that was asked by Gregory Grief. Yeah. Don't do it. It's just, it's a really weird, numb, like awkward sensation. You just don't want to, you don't want to put the, the, the product, you don't want to ingest the products. It's just not going to work out for you. I yeah. you get the scent and that helps a little bit, but yeah, yeah. yeah it's not but quite there. I will say don't, yeah. don't try it. It, 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 it definitely <laughs> leads you to wonder, but <laughs> these are still cleaning products, okay? Yeah. Scent is engineered mm -hmm. as part of the experience. We want you to have a positive memory linked to the process. And likewise, uh, if you ever get in a jam and, I don't know, you're blindfolded using something, you can identify which product you're using by yeah. smell, most likely. Mm -hmm. I always get, get made fun of uh, customers and employees alike smelling buffing pads to figure out what was on them last. <laughs> yeah. but, hey. That's one of the, the, for us as the product development team, that's probably one of our top things we enjoy doing. Yeah, well, putting those scents in there is yeah. fun. You can get a little... <laughs> sketchy though on who who's driving that yeah you know. again i i've i've worked around these products for a long time uh i have you know unfortunately tasted a few of them yeah, yeah. and i just yep. it's not worth it guys yeah, just don't do foaming it. surface do wash taste. on the lips yeah. last weekend public service announcement <laughs> yeah don't ingest if you have little kids at home buy some mr yuck stickers or something like that <laughs> they look tasty too so all right what uh, you got i got a i got a hair compliment as well so that's oh, great nice yeah. nice <laughs> come on guys 
What's <laughs> going on here? Yeah, leaving, leaving Sam <laughs> hanging over We're there. working on a, a bootleg, to change it up. bootleg hair gel product. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, again, we, we've had a ton of participation. I think we should reward an exceptional participant. Uh, he's been very excited the entire time. I don't have a specific question he's, from he's, him. He's lost his mind. Uh, but where did he go? Oh, my gosh. Many of us have. Doctor. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> I like that. Mr. Doctor, you're going to get our last uh, G9 that we're giving away as part of this uh, YouTube Live. You've asked a ton of questions. We do appreciate your participation. We'd like all of you to be as crazy in your participation with us. Um, yeah. So that's eight tools we gave away. Holy nice. cow. Yeah. We, as a reminder, we still have the last two that we are giving away after this live stream has ended. Post your comments down below on the final comments. So if you asked a question in this live stream and we didn't get to it, you have the ability to ask that question in those comments. We're going to sort through them. And we're going to pick two more winners from that as well. Awesome. If you've already asked a question and didn't win, don't hesitate to ask another. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Again, and we, uh, we really appreciate the participation. Once again, we told you about the buyback program. If you have never bought a Griot's Garage Random Orbital and you've been waiting on the sidelines, get after it. This now is pull the, the time, trigger, guys. Yeah, this is the best tool on the market for sure. Uh, we know you're gonna love it, so don't wait till they're sold out, or yeah. or don't wait till you're you know 60, 70 to or even beyond to you know continually do it by hand. Get get on board with the machine program because it just makes it effortless and. And it's very, very safe. So yeah. And again, uh, Tony Evo just asked, is it good for beginners, pros, or weekend all warriors? Day, yeah. All the above. All the above. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. You can do whatever you'd like with this machine. You can uh, really, really adapt it a lot of ways. Yeah. And uh, the low vibration, lower noise, lower operating temperature, all of those things. That's the. Those are the lessons we've learned over yeah. time. Yeah. Well, yeah. the shorter throw is gonna make it a lot more user friendly for a beginner than a long throw platform too, mm -hmm. which we got that question quite a bit. So yeah. Yeah. short throw is a little easier to manage, easier to stay away from adjacent panels stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And if you bump into a body line or something or a molding, the 21s uh, having that long throw can can even lead to some potential damage. So there's certain precautions you have to take when you use those types of tools. Uh, that's where this comes into play, very safe. Yeah. yeah. Um, a couple other questions. Why is it red and black? These are, <laughs> these are our company colors. We've been selling yeah. a, uh. a red and black yeah. iteration of pretty much everything you can imagine since day one. How's the story go? The building? Yeah, the building. Paint it. Uh, we're, we're in our beautiful <laughs> headquarters right now, and it was about a nine-month project once we got all our permits, and Richard was here every day. Yeah. But when he wasn't here <laughs> and a decision needed to be made, he simply said, look, you've got three colors to choose from, red, white, or black. Yeah. They should never <laughs> touch each other. So if it's a white wall, the next color is either going to be black or red. Don't make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, I'll be here too, just to verify that. Yeah. So yeah, I've heard that story. And we did get a couple questions about special edition colors long term. Oh, special edition. We had somebody say editions. that if they wanted a pink one, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> There's a company out there for you if you like yeah. limited editions. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. And honestly, um, I'm sure it's possible. We know it's possible. Well, with 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 our partner, it's uh, yeah, it would be potential, but uh, I don't know. Maybe submit some of your your favorite colors as long as they're red, black, or not white. Yeah, I pose a question <laughs> to you: Would you rather have us mess around and change the color of this tool, or work on developing the next best thing, or another tool, or another tool there? Yeah. Yep. yeah. So I think our decision is made. It's not very hard for us to decide how we spend our time. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna focus on continuing to evolve, continuing to improve our products. Yeah. Um, any last words, guys? Uh, thanks for the engagement. It was really cool to see yeah. the, the increase. I think uh, for you guys that like the giveaways, the more you engage, the more reason it gives us to do more giveaways, more incentives. So yeah. you know, keep yeah. it up. I appreciate you guys uh, inviting me on the stage, so to speak, and hanging out with you guys. It's been great. Yeah, that's Absolutely. awesome. Um, one final word again. Don't forget to keep commenting after the live stream has ended. We're giving away two more machines. And one final note, and oh. I'm very excited to say this. Oh boy, here, don't give away secrets. The G9 <laughs> has been a big project, but it's not the only thing we're working on. And we have a lot more good going on in the very near future. So keep your eye out. I saw a lot of hopes and dreams. 
that were being commented on and <laughs> asked about in this section. We are ever vigilant, and like we said, we are working on the next best thing. So keep your eyes peeled. We got a lot more coming. We'll see you at SEMA. Yep. Yeah, see you at SEMA. That'll be great. Thank you very much, everybody. Have fun in your garage. Have fun in your garage. Have fun in your garage. <laughs>